Hello and welcome back. In this section, we're going to tackle the Salesforce navigation part of the exam. So let's quickly run through what we're going to cover before we dive into Salesforce. So first, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of Salesforce. I'm just going to point out some of the key parts of it, some of the key interface options and some of the key features. Then we'll go to head into list views where we're going to go a bit more in detail because these are really useful. We'll then talk about record pages. We'll move into the lightning app builder and then we're also going to cover page layouts. And then to finish, I'm just going to show you a couple of the key pages within setup. So let's talk about our Salesforce tour and what we're going to cover. We're going to start at the home page. Then I'm going to show you the navigation bar and the app launcher. We'll cover personal settings and setup. And then we're also going to look at favorites, global actions and the global search. We'll then move on to learning paths and help and notifications. And then we're going to look at the differences between standard navigation and console navigation. And then finally, we're going to finish off with utility items. So let's head into Salesforce. So here we are in Salesforce and what you see here is the Lightning homepage. This can be configured for apps and for profiles, meaning that you can have multiple homepages and users will only see the homepage that you set for them. And that's based on the app and or their profile. To configure the homepage, we just need to hit the gear icon and we just need to hit edit page. Then we can make all of the customizations that we want. We can easily add and remove components just by dragging and dropping them onto the page and we can easily move them around as well. To get rid of them, we can just hit the delete button and that's going to remove them from the page as well. What you'll also notice is that you have this right hand side panel here and this just displays all the properties. So if we click on a component, you'll then see we get the properties for that component as well. But we're going to dive into the Lightning App Builder because this is what we're using to customize this page. We're going to dive into that later on but for now let's just come out of that and head back to the front end of salesforce at the top of the screen we have the navigation bar and this is where you can access objects quickly you can customize this bar as well if you just head across to the pencil icon you can easily drag and drop your objects so they're just going to appear in a different order so it'll just rearrange the tabs at the top if you want you can add more items so if we just click add more items we can then start adding any other objects that we want there as well. If we do want to remove an object or a tab, we can just hit the X, which is then going to remove that from our tabs and from our navigation bar. We'll just hit save now, just because we've removed that asset. On the left hand side is where we have the app launcher. And this is where you can switch between apps quickly. Now apps are just collections of objects and you can create and edit apps to provide a more streamlined, user-friendly interface. To rearrange apps and to hide or enable visibility, you will just need to use the app menu in setup. And if you wanted to create or edit apps, then you would use the app manager, which again, you can find in setup too. Apps can be customized with icons, colors, navigation styles, as well as other things. And users can be prevented from having access to apps as well. So if you created an app, especially for the sales team, you could configure the security of the app so that only users with the sales team profile can access it. That would mean that customer support could access it or the marketing team could access it as well. So now let's talk about personal settings and you'll find these in the top right of the page where you can see your user image. You can customize your user image through your user record. If you click on the profile, you'll then be able to see we have a few options here. We have display density, which we can toggle between comfy and compact. When the density is set as compact, you do get more information on the screen. Whereas when you set it as comfy, there's more white space, meaning you get less on the screen. But we're going to click on settings, and this is going to open up our personal settings. Now here is where you can find your personal information. You can also find settings around the display and layout. You can see your email settings, and you can also see chatter, calendar and reminders, desktop add-ons, and you can access the import wizard from here as well. It is worth knowing that if you wanted to set your email signature, you just need to open up your email settings and then configure it here. If you wanted to customize your chatter notifications, you could do that using chatter. And then you could also control your calendar and reminders, which would then just allow us to set up reminder settings. So let's head back to the homepage and we're just gonna cover one last part. In the top right hand corner, we also have the gear icon. 
and this is what we use to enter setup so we can customize our org and there's two setups available we have the standard setup which is the fully blown setup which gives us every single configuration option we could want and then we have service setup which is a more streamlined tailored setup designed for service cloud configuration we can access the developer console and we can also use the edit page option when we use this it's going to open up the current page that we're on in lightning app builder where we can then carry out our customizations we also have our favorite list here so if a user marks a record as favorite it will appear in this list giving the user quick access to it the plus icon holds all the global actions which we're going to talk about in more detail later on but just know that you can launch global actions from this button we then have learning paths which will show you context dependent trailhead resources and that's going to help you develop and improve your salesforce knowledge and then we have the question mark which is for salesforce help the final part we have up here are notifications and these are triggered in a number of ways it can be by someone mentioning you in chatter it can be a task is due or you've been sent a record to approve and many many more options at the top we have the global search box and this will let us search for what we want in salesforce so if we type in burlington for example you'll see that we're given quick access to anything that really matches that search term. So we can see Burlington Textile Corp of America opportunities, tasks, accounts. But if we just type in Burlington and we just hit enter, it's going to give us a better view, a more inclusive view of everything that we can see. The global search feature is a fantastic way for your users to find what they're looking for. Now, I'm just going to close that learning path down. And I'm going to show you the difference between standard navigation and console navigation. So what we're seeing here is standard navigation. And that's where we have this navigation bar at the top of the page. But we also have console navigation, which is designed for fast paced environments. So if we open the app launcher here and we type in console and we open up the sales console, you'll be able to see that our navigation bar has now disappeared. But in fact, it hasn't disappeared. It's just been placed elsewhere. And if we hit this drop down button here, you can see that we have access to all of our navigation items here. And if we open up accounts, for example, we'll get the accounts list view here. And I'm just going to change that to all accounts. And then what you'll notice is as I click through these accounts here, they're all opening up in the navigation bar. So this just allows us to navigate around records quickly without losing what we're on. But there's another part of this as well. If we open up a related record, such as the contact for GenePoint, you'll see that it puts it in a sub tab as well. And we can do that with any of the related objects. So this is really, really useful for when users need to work in a fast paced environment and they need to navigate around records quickly without losing what we're working on. What we've also got as well is this button over here. So this arrow and this just helps us enable or disable the split view. So it gives us that nice easy access as well. The final part of console navigation are utility items. And again, these can be customized using the Lightning App Builder and they just allow us to launch a number of actions that can make our users' lives easier. As you can see at the moment, all we have is the history utility item. And that's just gonna show us our record history. We can have notes in here for easy access to notes. We can have macros, flows, recent items, and much, much more. But just remember that utility items are only available for console navigation. 